Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansky, and welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we'll give you guys a fresh perspective on things. And now we see them today. We got a hell of a show for you guys. Uh, but before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to check out the Dreamers Pro podcast that we have pinned in the comments uh, below. So this is a topic uh, that I wanted to get to yesterday, but had a bunch of things uh, that I was doing. So I said, okay, let's touch on it today. Uh, Mitch, who works with us, sent it sent it over to me. I was like, okay, let me just think about it, and then we'll t we'll touch on it. Now, I saw a lot of people reacting to this story last night, so I said, okay, today this would be something interesting uh, to talk about. So, as you guys know, uh, Bronny James, LeBron's first son, has been making a lot of news because he has aspirations of going to the NBA. That's number one. Number two, LeBron has made it crystal clear over the last year or two that his dreams, one of his dreams is to be able to play at least one season with his eldest son, Bronny James, who he's named, who uh, his son is named after uh, him, right? So that being the story, uh, a lot of media outlets have been talking about the story, obviously, because it brings in a lot of views, a lot of clicks, a lot of revenue. So um, a bit of news dropped uh, yesterday via Sham Karinia. Um, and apparently the news was centered on the fact that apparently 10 NBA teams requested to to work out Bronny James, but uh, in, a, in, a, in a head scratching turn of events, he declined all of the invitations with the exception of only two teams. And those teams reportedly being the Phoenix Suns and the Los Angeles Lakers. So we actually uh, want to get into his report, want to play it for you because maybe some of you guys haven't heard it. But before we even get into what he had to say, this video is brought to you by our sponsor, Game Time, who's the official sponsor of today's show. Game Time Tickets is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets faster and easier than ever. For example, I am super excited about the games between the Dallas Mavericks and the Minnesota Timberwolves this week. With Game Time Tickets, I can easily pick the best tickets for me. I love that I can choose between different deals. I have the option to select the cheaper deal, the best option deal, or my favorite, the flash deal. The flash deal gives me the option to find discounts that I can only find on game time. Once I select the ticket I want, I can see view my seat. And it's not just restricted to the NBA. I can also look for the best ticket deals for other sports like football, baseball, or concerts, or comedy, or theater shows. Included in my purchase, I also have a 24-hour return guarantee, a lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. And remember, whenever you support this sponsor, you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So what we want to do now is want to play exactly what Sham had to say. I want you guys to listen to it and then we're going to come back and react to uh, his report. Take a listen to what he had to say here. Yeah, Brian James has over 10 workout invites uh, during the pre-draft process, but I'm told he's only going to visit a couple of those, and that's going to include the Lakers and the Phoenix Suns. The Suns have the number 22 overall pick in the draft. He's under consideration there among, obviously, a lot of players at, at 22, but it's going to come down to the development plan. It's going to come down to guaranteed money. Uh, whether it's late in the first round, in the second round. But the fact that there's only going to be a couple teams, two, three teams that Bronny James visits and the Lakers and Suns, interestingly, are among the two teams. So you heard what the report had to say. Now, I want to read uh, some of the things that people had to say in, in, in response to this. Uh, one person says, um, uh, let me just read some of the comments. Trying to go first round. I respect it. Another person said a perfect example of the word privilege. Kid is not an NBA material, but will get drafted because of his daddy. Um, another person uh, said, what eight teams did he decline to work out for? Are they that desperate to get LeBron James? Another person said, what a joke. If he gets drafted and gets guaranteed money, every player he faces on the court is going to abuse him, especially the underrated two-way rookies who are going to be out for blood uh, mad because they better, but he's getting guaranteed uh, money. Another person said, now every basketball fan knew the Lakers would invite him. That's not news. So that's what some people had to say about that report. What are my thoughts? Well, my thoughts are very simple and I'm going to keep them concise and to the point. Look, um, I'm not sure what these teams are after uh, beyond the fact that they may be trying to lure 
uh, LeBron James. We actually put up a post on our channel asking the question about 30 minutes ago. Where we said, should the Lakers consider drafting Bronny James? And out, about, and, and out of the 1,000 people that have voted, uh, 81% said no, 19% said yes. Now, I think the reason why those people are saying no is because if you're looking at the current state of affairs of the Los Angeles Lakers, it is clear that the Lakers need a different piece. They need players with more size and more length, uh, uh, three and D players. And if you look at Bronny, although he's talented to a certain degree, he's a bit undersized for a guard. He's about six foot one, six foot two. Um, and that would mean that most likely he would have to play the point guard position. And I'm not sure if the Lakers are out there in search of a six foot one, six foot two guard. So if the Lakers were to ultimately draft him, then that means they would probably be doing it because of his father, uh, LeBron James, which now brings us to a larger discussion, which is um, does Bronny James want to get into the NBA because he wants to be his own person or does he want to get in the NBA because he wants his dad to help him get in there? And it's interesting because if you listen to him a few weeks ago or a week or two ago, he was talking about that he wants to pave his own way. He wants to be his own man, kind of create his own legacy and reputation for himself. But then turning out all those other teams just to focus on the Lakers and the Suns, that kind of seems to fly in the face of what you said. Right. If I want to be my own man, I want to go do my own thing. I want to be away from my dad. I want to go make a name for myself. I don't want to be under him and then having daddy hold my hand through, you know, hold my hand through the door and all of that and walk like if you truly want to be your own person. I've seen players that have gotten certain things because of their dads, or at least that's been implication. If you look at Austin Rivers uh, and his dad, Doc Rivers, a lot of people have kind of going to Doc Rivers or you're in here because your dad you only got this contract because of your dad and no one wants to no one wants that especially if you're a guy watching the show and you're you know you have a dad that maybe has done well for himself in whatever field or whatever it is you usually guys like that want to make a name for themselves now there's some guys that are eager to just jump onto the daddy bandwagon because daddy got a lot of money and daddy gonna give me his money and I'm gonna ride the and I'm gonna ride the wave uh but usually what happens is you seldom see uh, a son that comes after his dad that is very, very, very successful, be as successful as his dad, as, as his father. Um, it rarely happens. It rarely, rarely happens because I personally believe that the circumstances that usually the father is raised in are harder than the circumstances the son is raised in, especially when it's first generation, when it's the first time, like first time, gener first, uh, the first time you're becoming wealthy, right? Whereas the son, you're growing in a totally more coddled environment, whereas the dad had to go through something totally different and had a different set of experiences. In the case of Bronny James, I'm not exactly sure what he wants to do uh, in terms of him wanting to create his own legacy. Uh, we have to wait and see, but ultimately it's going to become evident based on the decisions that he makes. If I'm him, I don't know why I'd want to play with my dad uh, just because I would want to be my own person. You know what I'm saying? Just because I would want to be my own person and I don't want anybody anywhere attributing my success to, oh, you only did it because of your dad. Like what person, what man, young man wants that? Again, some people do, but the vast majority of us don't. I'm a first son. My dad is very successful in business and nobody's sitting up here talking about like i'm not sitting up here oh, let me show you how i did because of my dad nah we don't you don't get a kick off of that like you don't get a kick that that's just the culture i come from is ebos we don't you know ebos you're even if your dad is rich you got to go out there and make your own way you just have to right and that same thing with my dad and it it's just the thing we're not sitting up here salivating now there are some ebos like i know a very 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 rich uh ebo guy i think he's the number one aluminum supplier uh, I think in, in, in West Africa, all of Africa, very, very rich guy. Uh, and he has his son who's always showing off his dad's wealth on social media with Lamborghinis, Ferraris, flying private jets and all of that stuff. But his dad is his dad money. His dad, it, it's his dad's money. Now he's the first, is his first son. So according to the culture, you know, a lot of his wealth is going to be bequeathed to his son and his son is living it up. And he has, sees no problem with it. My thing is, if you're going to be flexing and spending like that, when you're posting on the gram or you're posting on TikTok, just let it be known that's daddy's money. Don't run around with that look on your face like this is your money. You're just basically continuing daddy's empire. So don't walk around with that look on your face. That's daddy's money. There ain't nothing wrong with it. But you are you are quite different from those of us who's going out here and getting it on our own. And there's a fundamental difference. And I would rather be in that group. I don't want to be the guy that, oh, you only got this because of your dad. I would not die. Rather, I, I I would I would rather be worth $2 million than know, and know I did it on my own than to be worth 10 or 20. And everybody can look at you. Oh, you only got that because of your dad. F out of here. I don't want that. Those are my thoughts. That's how I feel about it. Uh, so what I want to know from you guys, what do you guys think about the story? Uh, the, the story? What do you think about our analysis? Whatever you guys think. Leave your thoughts in the comments and we catch you on the next show. Peace.